if one wants to work on themselves but doesn't know who they are, how can they achieve this? Beautiful. Beautiful. How old are you? Fourteen. Wow. Anybody else wish they were that deep at 14? So the work that we do on ourselves, when we speak about working on ourselves, we're usually speaking about a a psychological level. So we say, for example, I've got a problem with anger or a problem with greed or a problem with jealousy or a problem with negative thinking. And we work on that in a variety of different ways. But when you've taken us a beautiful step deeper, how do we know who we are? And if we don't know who we are, how can we work on ourselves? Well, the truth is, the deep core of who you are, that capital T truth of who you are, doesn't need any work. The capital T truth of who you are is perfect, divine, whole, full, complete. We have that beautiful mantra, right, in the Upanishads that we chant in the arti, we chant it in our yagnas. The mantra that says, Purnamada, Purnamidam. Purnat Purnamudachate, Purnasya Purnamadaya, Purnameva Vashishyate. Now that mantra means that, the capital T, that, is infinite. Infinite, whole, perfect. And this, which has been created out of that is also, therefore, infinite, whole, complete, divine. It's like if I say to you mathematically, what's infinity minus 10? What's the answer? Infinity, right. What's infinity divided by 100? Great. Great. What's infinity divided by 8 billion? So whether it's 100, whether it's 8 billion, whether it's 100 billion, whatever you divide infinity by, or whatever you minus from infinity, it's still infinity. That's the mathematical equivalent of this mantra. If God the creator, the goddess, however we identify the divine, is infinite. Which, of course, God is. If God weren't infinite, God wouldn't be God. It's sort of part of the definition. If God, if God only lived here or there, then God would be like one of us, not God. So by nature and by definition... God is infinite. We've been created of God, which means whether you take it spiritually or you take it mathematically, that we are also infinite, that we are also divine, that we are also full and whole. So that's the truth of who you are. And that doesn't need any work at all. That truth is is perfect. The problem is that we don't know who we are, as you said so beautifully. And when we don't know who we are, we identify as the bodies. Because that's how people treat us. They say, oh, you are so pretty. Oh, you are so tall. Oh, you are really 
fat or skinny or macho or fair-skinned or dark-skinned or whatever. That's how people identify us. Oh, you're the smart one. Oh, you're the athlete. Oh, you're the president of the company. Oh, this is how people treat us. And when we don't know who we are, we take our identities based on how people treat us. Based on what our body is like, the size, the shape, the color, how that size, shape, color compares to what the current fad is, what the current models are of beauty or success. And so we suffer. We suffer. Because you can never be, as they say, rich enough, beautiful enough, successful enough. And we see it. We see it in our lives. Doesn't matter how much we have, we always want more. There's always some level of feeling like we're not enough. And so this is where we use our spiritual practice to remember who we are on that core level. But then once we know that, the tragedy is, or maybe it's not a tragedy, maybe it's just an opportunity. The opportunity is that even knowing that on a deep spiritual level, we still have these psychological levels to work with. Just knowing that I'm one with God doesn't necessarily automatically make me anger free. There's a lot of people in a lot of meditation workshops all over the world chanting aham brahmasmi, so hum, I am God, I am one with God, I am that. And then walking out, yelling at each other, S.N. Goenkaji, who was the founder of Vipassana Meditation. I remember listening to him give a talk maybe 20 years ago. And he said, it's amazing because we do this spiritual practice of meditation. It gives us this deep, deep, powerful experience of who we are, but it doesn't in and of itself free us of the games of the mind. And he said so many times at the end of these 10-day silent Vipassana meditation retreats, people would feel like, yeah, I'm there, I'm there, I'm so there, I'm one with the universe. And they'd walk out, and the first thing you'd hear people say is, what the hell happened to my shoes? Where are my shoes? Who took my shoes? So we have an opportunity, in addition to our deep spiritual work, to also work on our psyche. Because it's not, it's not the core of who you are that needs work. It's your psyche. It's the, it's the patterns. No problem. Kind of notes are good, new questions are good. But I wanna, but I wanna make sure, I wanna make sure that you hear this because you're at an age. I mean, we're all at an age, but teenage years especially are ages where we feel so insecure. We feel so much like there's so much work to be done. From the pimple on my nose, right, to my hair, not that you have one, but when I was that age, no, I promise you don't, but when I was that age, that was always the, always the issue, was the pimple on my nose. To what my hair looks like, to my friends, to my grades, to my weight, to my clothes, the whole thing. We're so insecure. 
And so the core that you need to know is that who you are at the deep core is perfect, absolutely perfect. Full, whole, infinite, divine. And, and we have psyches. And these psyches are born out of lifetimes of karmic cycles. They're born out of what we call sanskaras, patterns. They're born out of experiences that happen in our childhood. They're born out of the teachings and experience that we get from our parents from our education, from our culture. And those things tend to not always keep reminding us how full and perfect and divine we are. They tend to tell us over and over again that we're not smart enough, successful enough, attractive enough, constantly that we're not doing well enough, whether in school, whether in life, whether socially. And that tends to lead to ignorance. It also then tends to lead to greed, because obviously I want more. It creates an ego, a whole false identification. We start identifying as what we look like, as how much money we have. These days, we start to identify as our persona online. At a young age, this is, I mean, for adolescents and young people, this is an incredible struggle at this age. I mean, most of us had enough trouble figuring out who we are and just this body. But now... Now young people have to not only figure out who they really are, but they have to curate a whole other identity for online. I can't even imagine what that must be like. And so, so there's so much struggle. But regardless of the, the size, the shape, the money, the grades, the skills, the abilities, Regardless of any of that, who you are is divine. And, and you probably have this beautiful opportunity to look at yourself and say, maybe I get angry too much, or maybe I take things too personally, or maybe I find myself competing with others too much. And these are just examples, not actually about you. These are just examples about all of us. And this doesn't mean that I'm any less divine or any less perfect. It just means that this divinity has come on earth, this particular incarnation, in this body, of this size, this shape, this color, this family, these skills, these challenges, these struggles. And it's a beautiful opportunity then to look at yourself and realize I'm not the anger. I'm not the jealousy. I'm not the struggle. I'm not the curated identity online. I'm not the size and shape of my body. I'm not my bank account. I'm not my grades. I'm divine. And to just keep reminding yourself of that. And if you can do that, then you will find yourself much freer, much freer of a lot of the stuff that impacts and troubles most other people. And you're still very young. Young enough to keep from making too many of these personality patterns and struggles really cemented. So just keep reminding yourself, I am porn because God is porn. And even if I get angry, even if I fail an exam, even if I get a pimple on my nose, even if I don't get invited to the parties I want to go to, 
Even if somebody's angry with me or I fought with someone. That's on this very superficial level of my psyche drama. I'm still divine. I'm still whole. I'm still full. And this psyche stuff, I can take care of it. Because there's no need. I can let it go. I don't have to be attached to it. Because I realize that it's just hurting me. And so you keep letting it go. You keep letting it go into fire, into yagna ceremonies, into water, into Ganga. Just keep letting it go so that you can keep remembering, oh yeah, I'm one with God. It's okay if I didn't get invited to the party. I'm still whole and full and complete and divine. And just keep remembering that.